everyone. Today we're making a mushroom hot chocolate, but first let's show you how I break down one of my key ingredients, chaga. But make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video to hear the medicinal properties of the mushroom hot chocolate we make. So right here I have what is Inanatus obliquus, the elusive chaga. So you can see this one is curling right out of a birch tree, which is typically where you'll find chaga growing out of. So the outside looks like burnt charcoal and the inside is nice and golden. Let's see if I can get a piece off here. I don't know if I'll be able to with my hands, but I'll break a piece off and I'll be right with you. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So I air dry my chaga because I, I kind of have to. When I find chaga, I have to go up north in the state I live in. So I do have to travel and I usually do for multiple days. So I can't really chop it up with my hatchet until I get home, at least I choose not to. So I let it dry, I chop it up. It takes a while to get it into small enough pieces for tea, but it's definitely worth it. I mean, just look at how beautiful this is. So the chaga that I just showed you, I chopped up this summer and I made a tincture out of it. So here we are three months later, I made a tincture of chaga, turkey tail, and reishi. And I know exactly what I want to do with that today. We're going to be making some mushroom hot chocolate and I'm going to be using some infused mushrooms. This is specifically a tincture made with turkey tail, chaga, and reishi that I made. Some infused honey. This has uh, chamomile and reishi. And I am going to use a non-dairy milk. You can use the milk of your choice and some raw cacao powder. I may um, kind of experiment a little bit and add some different ingredients along the way, but join me as I make some mushroom hot chocolate on a chilly winter day in Wisconsin. Okay, so I'm going to start by heating up my mushroom extract. Again, I have chaga, reishi, and turkey tail as a tincture. Um, now this tincture was a little bit of an experiment and it actually has a bit less alcohol than I would typically um, use in a tincture. So, um, it, But because it does have alcohol in it, I'm not going to use as much as I would typically use, say if I were to use a mushroom tea to make a mushroom hot chocolate. So if you want to, instead of using like a tincture, I'm just using what I have on hand today, um, you could make let's say a chaga hot chocolate and you could uh, infuse it in water make a chaga tea you'd want to use i don't know a couple small handfuls or a uh, tablespoon small chunks of chaga and add that to maybe a half gallon of water and simmer it for an hour or two and you can use that to make hot chocolate um so since i'm using a tincture because i have a lot of this tincture on hand i'm gonna experiment with this. It might taste funny, but I'm willing to experiment. It's just for me. And I'm only making a small bit because I realize that I only have a very small amount of my dairy-free milk here. So I'm going to get this simmering. Okay, I've got the simmering. So I'm going to add milk. Like I said, I don't have a ton in here. This is a little bit... Oh, it smells good already. I was gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract, but I forgot that there's vanilla in the milk already, so I might not do that. I'm going to add my infused honey. You can use any sweetener you want. You can use maple syrup, sugar, brown sugar, honey. I am only using infused honey because I recently made some infused honey, so I have a lot of that. Um, I'm hoping the chamomile won't throw off the flavor too much, but there's also uh, reishi in here. So, we'll just see. This is a big experiment today. There's a lot of ways to make mushroom hot chocolate. I just wanted to use what I had in my cupboards. Yeah, definitely an experiment, but I will be honest about the results. <laughs> I decided if I'm full out experimenting today, I am going to infuse a little bit of peppermint into the mix. Keep in mind with peppermint, you only want a very small bit. I'm using maybe half teaspoon. Um, something like that because peppermint is very strong but it's also really good. I'm just going to go ahead and start steeping this. 
Um, just gonna eyeball this. I don't know how much I really want to use. I'm probably gonna use maybe a tablespoon of honey. Mm. We'll start with that much. You can see I have a lot of little bits of um, chamomile in here because when I infuse the honey, I didn't mind having a little bit of chamomile seed. I grew the chamomile myself. Um, it was definitely one of my favorite things I grew, if not the best thing I grew in my garden this year, so I'll definitely be growing a lot more of it next year. Um, that's one of my favorite things to gift to people. I forgot to bring the <laughs> raw cacao powder over, so this doesn't even have anything chocolatey in it yet. Look at it, it looks so good and it smells amazing. So I'm gonna start off with about one tablespoon. Actually, you know, I might even do a little less. Just to start off with, um, I don't wanna overdo it. I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. Can use cocoa powder if you want. Um, cacao powder is supposed to be better for you, way less, less processed than cocoa powder. So cocoa powder and raw cacao powder are different things. Um, you could do this in a food processor blender would probably blender would probably be the best idea. I'm going to taste test. See where we're at. If I need to add anything. Soup's up. Ooh. Okay, it's actually way better than I expected it to be. I didn't have the highest hopes because I'm literally just using whatever I can find. Um, but wow, I was afraid that using a tincture was really gonna throw this off. Uh, but I think I did good here. The vanilla flavoring in here. Um, I don't taste too much of the peppermint, but just enough to like give a kind of a refreshing aftertaste. It'll be good enough for me. I don't feel like adding more right now because there's enough complex flavor going on here, but it's all working kind of cohesively. I might add a little bit of cinnamon to this. Got some cinnamon, just gonna eyeball this. A little sprinkle. If you don't like cinnamon, obviously you don't have to add this. I'm gonna give her another taste test. I think I did the perfect amount of sweetener. If you, you could, I could have even gone a little bit less. Yeah, I can see on camera that my uh, oven our stove top looks dirty. It's not, I mean, there's little drops from when I've been mixing this, but I cleaned, <laughs> cleaned this and it's a glass top, but you can see the scratches on the glass top. There's scratches kind of all over. You can't really see it so much with your eyes, but when the light is on it and the camera's on, you can see all these little micro scratches. That stove top is clean. It was, it just, looks like there's streaks because there's a bunch of little scratches. Turn it off. to your hot chocolate? Well, that's a good question. Let's address some of the medicinal properties that these mushrooms have. So Hi everyone, it's the next day and before we talk about the medicinal properties of the mushroom hot chocolate that we just made yesterday, I want to show you really quick two resources that you can find. I believe they're both on Amazon so I'll put the links in the description below. But first we have the Modern Herbal Dispensatory by Thomas Easley and Stephen Horn. This is an amazingly detailed book. It goes through all of the compounds that you'll find in each herb and mushroom that it is describing. 
and the medicinal properties of those compounds and references specific studies to each one. And then we have The Fungal Pharmacy by Robert Rogers. This is a phenomenal book. If you're into any kind of medicinal mushrooms, you have to have this. Some of the information I'm about to talk about are in these resources. With everything, when you research, you should use multiple resources and learn in person as much as you possibly can from somebody who is extremely knowledgeable and an expert. So I hope that's helpful. All three of the mushrooms that are in this mushroom hot chocolate that we just made are in these two resources. But these are uh, the two favorites that I have that I thought I would share with you and they are linked below. So in and out of subliquous or chaga has polysaccharides, which can regulate your immune system and reduce cholesterol. Polysaccharides are known to also promote anti-tumor, antioxidant, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory responses. The charred looking black crust of chaga can be up to 30% betulin, which has been shown as a powerhouse against diseases such as liver disease, cancer, diabetes, and inflammation. The golden inside of chaga has lanistane triterpenoids, which also have similar anti-cancer, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory properties. Trimedes versicolor, or turkey tail, also has polysaccharides, and along with chaga, it's been widely researched for its anti-tumor activity. But turkey tail can also improve the outcome of cancer treatments, such as radiation or chemotherapy, and reduce the intensity of adverse side effects from said treatments. There is a ton of research on turkey tail and its benefits, so I encourage you to delve into that rabbit hole yourself. The reishi in my area is Ganoderma sugi, and yes, you guessed it, it also has polysaccharides, which benefit the immune system. It can be beneficial for stabilizing insulin levels, and it's also anti-allergenic, a blood purifier, and a lovely tonic to improve the quality of your sleep. Okay, so there's a lot more we could talk about in regards to possible medicinal benefits of these three fungi. But just to clarify, this information should never be used in lieu of doctor intervention and no herb or mushroom is a cure for any disease. Please consult your physician before self-diagnosing yourself or deciding to treat yourself with any natural remedy. Thanks for joining me today while we talked about chaga and made some mushroom hot chocolate. If you guys haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.